we're now in uh, my flat uh, one of the upper floors now over Christmas and New Year these fire detectors in the hallway, this is the hallway and the lounge and the bedroom and the kitchen as well I think were all chirping away like a a flock of sparrows so I looked it up and it said on the internet it's probably to do with flat batteries or low batteries but I couldn't I couldn't get up there it's too high obviously they're, they're out the reach so I can't and I can't read any instructions on there to say what you're supposed to do with them so it was holiday time so I I put up with it it was no problem during the day they're just chirping away but at night it was a little bit annoying so at the first opportunity I tried to contact Andium on my computer I've got a direct link and it like on there which links me to uh, Andium in theory so I clicked on it they said this is it this is the hotline you see so I clicked on it open it it's not opening at all now and that's what I got you see forbidden access is denied now 403 well I don't know what that's all about but obviously I couldn't communicate about the uh, the detectors the fire and smoke detectors so I gave up on that and uh, I phoned Andium and they came round within the hour or two, the electrician very helpful, to diagnose the fault. The fault was more complicated than a battery. So the guy had to go into the cupboard here and look at these mystery boxes. And he was a little wild. Now he was, I don't know if I can open one of these mystery boxes. Here I look. They've got all these little trip things in there you can see them now of course they're no use to the likes of me who've got you know slightly below average eyesight because the writing on them is so infinitesimally small that these you know i can't make any sense of that at all so anyway he found that there were some wires had come adrift so how they'd come adrift and he had to go down to into the bowels of the Anyway, he fixed it fairly easily, fixed it, no great problem. But it wasn't just a simple matter, and it made me wonder if these systems have been thoroughly checked out, because obviously, if there is a fault in the fire detection system, we ought to know about it, or somebody ought to know about it, and ought to rectify it. Now, I, don't, I hope, I presume other flats are not having the same problem. Whilst... Uh, Andium's electrical contractor was here. I said, could you uh, alter my heating unit? Because we've had several people down to look at it and we couldn't set the damn thing. It's very like now, it's quite hot now. And it's got this, it's got this system, which is a sort of the curse of the uh, 21st century. Everything's computerized. Now he, he, he said he checked the hours and he checked in a few minutes and he adjusted the temperature, all very good. Now it's got two lights on today on the switch and I don't know quite what they mean. I presume one means it's charging up. I don't, I honestly don't know. But it's got this book with it, which has got 88 pages of illustrations and diagrams, which is, I mean, if that was a book, instructions how to make an atomic bomb, it would be quite reasonable. But all that is about how to adjust the heating system. Now, it was beyond me, and it was beyond the three people that came down here to try to do it. And of course, I have sight difficulties and I have other difficulties. So, I don't know what people are supposed to do. This is essential information. I've just had my first electricity bill, £177. Whether that's expensive or not, I haven't worked it out yet, but it came as a bit of a shock. Uh, not an electric shock, but quite, quite near to being an electric shock, £177. And I have had a few thoughts with the electrical system here, which are too boring to discuss. But the point is, I'm trying to make 
is that these installations are very nice. The flat's very good, and I've got a lovely sea view. Look, look at that! I can see America. There it is on a good day. But they're not very user friendly in some parts. In anything that's electronic, you know you're into the land of the lost and you have to get an expert in to look at anything. There's no nice simple on-off switches anymore. Ah, here we are, that's better. I noticed this the other day. It's the, uh, the lightning uh, conductor and it's somebody's pulled it off the wall. Now whether that's working progress or kids, I don't know, but I suppose it will still work. But I, I do know there was a fire in a block of flats in St. Helier last year due to a lightning strike. So obviously these things are important. They have to work. So I just happened to notice that. Well, this is the the board at the Tor Heron block, 14 floors, you can see, with this rather strange numbering system they've got going down to the ground floor. But what they have got here is this little diagram on the G for ground floor. But the writing on it, I don't know who it's for, is so infinitesimally small that it's virtually impossible to read. No, it doesn't say much, you know, I don't know. I'm not quite sure whose information it's for. It's, um, I'm having trouble with my eyes today. My glasses are packing up for various reasons. And uh, it's, virtually, it's virtually useless, but I don't know, I don't know who's intended for. I noticed too, they used to have a notice board down here for tenants to put their notices on, but that seems to have gone, so it was occasionally it was a useful facility to communicate with uh, the other tenants, but um, it seems to have been removed but not replaced, which is a pity. Right, there are two lifts. This is uh, the only thing I would say about these lifts is that they're all very similar color tone and reflective surfaces. For some people, they could be very confusing. You don't know if you're obviously you think of sight impairment, but also for de degrees of dizziness or sensory impairment, it can be very confusing to go into a place where it's all reflective surfaces. And um, it's quite a decent lift. They're generally working, they've broken down a few times. But generally speaking, they're quite good, but it's a pity they haven't changed the colours a bit. On some of the floors, I think some of the windows are smoke windows. They open, I think, to allow smoke to go out, but I'm not sure where they are or how they work. I don't know. I'm not sure about that. There's no sign on to say it's a smoke window. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> I can... Well, this is where the lifts arrive at the 12th floor. It's all very good. All very neat, very tidy. It's got that same little chart there, which is too small to be usable, unfortunately. Uh, today there's very little wind around uh, these blocks, but sometimes these doors, which of course are fire doors, they do tend to hang open a bit sometimes. So obviously there's a dilemma with fire doors because they can be too heavy for some people to push. So if they were kept 
absolutely strictly closed at all times, they might create more problems. But when there's a, if there is a fire and there's smoke, it can permeate underneath the door, it can go down through the gap, you see, it's only a small gap. But that, uh, I don't know what they've got, whether they've got an intumescent strip on the bottom of the door, I don't know what they've got there. It should have some sort. See, they have a, an intumescent strip here. In the case of a fire, that expands. That's the theory. And so stops any smoke. Now this area, I thought was going to be, this is a lobby, I thought this was going to be a safe refuge, but I don't see any indication that it is a safe refuge. Because if you remember the tragic Grenfell fire, people were told to stay in their flats. And of course a lot of them, lost, 72, lost their lives because they were a safe refuge. The idea is it's somewhere outside the flat where you'll be collected by the firemen. Now, whether that's the theory now, I don't know, but I thought it was. I thought it was the theory, because this leads to a, the, a, a fire escape or the staircase. Now, we're on the 12th floor at the moment, but it's too much for me to, I can't, I can't use the staircase. I could ponder down. If there was a fire, I'd have great difficulty going down this staircase. But what I notice about this staircase, again they got another one, another one of those little things there which are too small to read. But they've only got one handrail. Now it's essential for any circumstance that you have two handrails on the staircase. Absolutely essential. You might use your right arm for going down, you might use your left arm for going down. I'll use that one, but you can't on this one because there's no handrail. And handrails can also indicate what floor you're on. There should also be on staircases, at the top of staircases, at the bottom of staircase, a sort of a tactile, a corduroy strip down here, just to warn you if you have got serious sight impairment or if it's full of smoke, for example, that there is a staircase pretty on. People who live here will know there's a staircase. But the typical problem with multi-occupancy buildings like this, you don't actually know who's in the building. If a fire breaks out, you don't know who is there. So for at Grenfell, there was a lot of discussion about how many people were there. On board. Now these are these are all tenanted by Andium, so they've got official tenants, but people might be stopping over who are staying. So it's very difficult to know. And we don't know what disabilities people might have. If you're if you've got a child, because obviously if there's an emergency the lifts don't work. If you've got a child in a pram to get down a staircase, it can be very difficult. What we're supposed to do, I don't know. We could do with some clearer instructions. A fire. We haven't had a fire drill since I've been here. I'm not quite sure what these arrows are supposed to show. I think they're telling people to go down. That's the way out, is going down, not to go up. You go up, there's 14 floors altogether, so I suppose that's quite sensible. You know, it says, no, that's a better sized script. Keep clear at all times. All shared areas are escape routes. All personal items left in these areas will be removed and disposed of without notice. So there you are, it tells you there. Well, as I have expressed before, it's a very nice flat. I'm very pleased with it. But having mine Grenfell, there's a fire just a couple of days ago in the Bronx in New York where people were burnt mostly died, most of them who died was because of sn smoke inhalation there was a fire yesterday in St. Helier which I presume was an Andean flat most of these fires Grenfell was certainly one are caused by an electrical failure something simple, a washing machine a fridge, a spin dryer something like that which has a fault. 
So it's essential, in my view, that the means of, for, the, for the tenants have the simplest possible means of operating the electrical installation in their flats. I don't know what more can be done, whether there can be more warning systems, lights, or bells that ring, I don't know. You see these, uh, I looked at the, the sound bleepers for fire, well, of course for somebody who's deaf they need a special installation sight, sound, they need us something that flashes. Now, they're not put in as standard. But again, you might have somebody who's staying here in this flat, or one of these flats, two bedroom flats, who has different, different disabilities. So one size does not fit all, unless it's designed for. So I'm just passing this on. It's a, hopefully they're still altering these blocks of flats. They've still got a lot of work to do. I hope they will make them slightly better than they are.